90 days of carnivore. What did I start it at? Where I'm at now? A few of the struggles. And really, most importantly, what are the benefits that I've achieved? What I'm doing right now is what I call flexible carnivore. And I'll unpack that a little bit and what I'm defining that as. And maybe that would be interesting to you. There's actually a video I just did on the four styles of carnivore, which you can find up here. That's going to cover the four different styles of carnivore that I see most people experimenting with and getting results on. So you definitely check that video out if you want an idea of maybe where you fit in and maybe a level you want to move up or down and eventually what you want to try to fall into. And for me, that's flexible carnivore. So let's first rattle off some of the benefits that I've achieved. Eliminate most of my back pain. Killed sugar cravings. I feel the best I've ever felt. I have been taking magnesium and iodine, and that's something you might want to look into. I actually have a video on supplement, my supplement routine, which you can find up here. The fact that the sun is out and I'm getting outside has been helping a lot. I've gained more muscle mass and leaned up with minimal exercise. I'm sleeping better. I'm feeling better. I'm thinking better. My focus is on point. I've been writing and creating content like crazy. On and on the list of benefits go. So let me talk real quick about a couple struggles I've run, run into and kind of what my next plan is. And then also talk about what this flexible carnivore diet really is, which is what I'm going to be probably doing in the near future. One of the things I have run into is when you go straight carnivore and you eliminate everything and then those foods slip in, your gut pays a price. Like it just doesn't feel as good. And you definitely don't have as much of the same gut microbiota to digest some of those potentially more toxic food. So I feel like it does make you a little bit more susceptible to things attacking the gut, but I don't necessarily see that as a con because I feel like it's a good way to stay in check. I mean, what better way to make sure you stay committed to your diet than your body literally revolting every time you have a little bit of something that's not ideal. And as I talk about flexible carnivore, you'll see how that might actually be a strategy to be able to maybe have a cheat meal or a little bit of a cheat meal every so often and kind of mitigate the damage. Whether you're going to do that or not is going to be up to you. And of course, flexible carnivore is not really for somebody that has autoimmune issues, which a lot of people find the carnivore diet for autoimmune issues. So just keep that in mind. Another thing I was running into was I was eating later at night and find myself waking up in the middle of the night and still being hungry. And what I realized is I just wasn't eating enough food, primarily protein. So what I've been doing is I've been, when I have my steak for breakfast, for example, I take some leftover ground beef, I fry it up in the pan that I just cooked the steak in while the steak is resting, and then I eat that as well, effectively adding a 20 to 30 extra grams to each meal. That pretty much curbed my hunger cravings. Also making sure I eat some of my seafood pate every single day. That seems to help for sure. You can find the video on how to make that up here. My son loves it. He actually spoonfuls it in his mouth. Big just spoonfuls. It's really good actually. <laughs> so when I first started carnivore, I was doing probably about 97% carnivore, a strict carnivore, a little bit of dairy here and there, a little bit of cheese, but nothing, not enough to really change the effects I was getting on strict carnivore. I do recommend if you're going to start on carnivore to start with probably 30 days minimum of just animal foods. And then if you want to move to something like carnivore plus dairy, adding dairy in strategically, ideally from raw sources and not the industrialized dairy products you find in store. That stuff is just not good to eat. When it comes to dairy, I feel like it's easy to overeat. And if you're trying to lose weight, I would definitely avoid dairy. That's something that is just very, very hard to modulate. And you have to pay very careful attention to how much you're eating because when you're eating something like cheese or melting butter on a steak or whatever, it just tastes so good and you don't notice how much you eat. And at the end of the day, if you're eating 500 extra calories that you wouldn't have eaten, it's gonna hinder your weight loss efforts. So if weight loss is a goal, definitely go for strict carnivore, 30 days minimum, and then kind of experiment with certain foods to add in. And so right now, 90 days in, I've been adding certain plants in, not really on purpose, just if they're there. So if the family makes something like a hash, for example, and there's some sweet potato in it and maybe some onions, I might even just pick the sweet potato out or I might just eat it. And I've noticed that some of these cleaner foods that are less toxic, I do just fine with. If I'm in the mood for some carbs, I might have some sweet potato, right? Like sweet potato fries to me now taste so delicious because I don't really eat anything with sugar or that's that very carb dense. So they actually taste like dessert, which is a cool benefit. So the question is, am I going to continue carnivore? And what version of it am I going to stick with for the long run? So yes, I'm gonna to stick to a carnivore diet. I'm going to feed my son a primarily carnivore diet, but it's gonna be a little bit more flexible, like I said. If I'm in the mood for some fruit and there's some fruit in the fridge, I might eat it. If there's some greens in something that was just made or there's a hash and there's a little bit of sweet potatoes in it, I'm gonna eat it. How much, how often, and how I feel afterwards are all gonna be things that I'm gonna throttle and pay attention to. By eating mostly animal foods, and by having a little bit of the not so toxic 
foods. Like I'm probably not gonna be eating spinach anytime soon. And I'll have a salad every so often of just like iceberg lettuce and some of the other spring mix or whatever. Like most of these foods in small doses are just fine. Most people can tolerate them. I definitely can. Salad's never been one that's attacked my gut in any way. I have done big batches of spinach that I've cooked down and those usually don't agree with me. But again, it's not the end of the world for me. Uh, so if I wanted to have some here and there, it wouldn't be a big deal. I probably won't because I don't see the value in them. But if they happen to be there, be available, and are, are ready to eat, I may eat them or at least have a couple bites just to add some variety and to kind of keep my gut guessing. Like I do think there's some benefit to having some plant matter in your diet just to feed certain of those gut microbes so that you're a little bit more anti-fragile. You're a little bit more robust in your gut health. I do think there's some benefit to that. And if you look at every observed hunter-gatherer that we've ever studied, they all ate some form of plants. They ate plants, fruit, honey, things like that, and they all did. So unless you have a severe autoimmune issue, I don't think certain plants in small doses and spaced out is going to be a problem. And there might even be a case to be made for them being beneficial here and there. So I think everybody should start a carnivore diet with a strict carnivore level one animal products only, and then experiment with maybe adding in some dairy, maybe adding in certain non-toxic plants or less toxic plants, I should say, like whether that's fruit, whether that's avocado, olives, maybe some cucumber, tomatoes, you know, there's just a lot of them that depending on your gut and your biology are going to affect you more than others. And so adding a little bit of the ones here and there that don't really bother you I think there's a case to be made where that's probably something a lot of us should aim for. Even if it's just for societal reasons where you want to be able to go out to a restaurant with your friends and not feel like you're going to have to run to the bathroom. Like there is a case to be made for having a little bit of that in your diet from a life satisfaction point of view. And also plants, when they're prepared properly, they taste pretty damn good. There's definitely an argument to be made for the enjoyment factor. Yes, carnivore is for me. It's for good. It's for life. Every human should be doing some form of carnivore. Now, the problem that I'm seeing today when people talk about carnivores, they think it's only animals, but I don't buy that at all. In fact, if you talk to someone like Sean Baker, he defines a carnivore diet as receiving most of the nutrition from animals, right? Not all, not 100%, but most of. And I think that is a better way to talk about it and to define it in a way where we can open this up a little bit more to bring more people in. Because the reality is a lot of people eat meat but then they also eat vegetables. And so they're not that far off from what a carnivore diet really is. And if maybe they just throttled back some of those plant foods that might be toxic to them, maybe eat a little bit less of them and then replace that with clean animals, for some people, that's not a lot of change at all. They're already kind of doing that. And so I think we need a little bit of a rebranding in the carnivore community so that we can reach more people. And that's why I'm going to start defining these different buckets and why I'm going to be talking about my version of carnivore as a flexible carnivore, where it's animal-based, a little bit of plants here and there, some fruits here and there if I want, and then raw dairy. And then yes, I'm gonna enjoy coffee and tea. I just am. <laughs> Do you have any questions, comments, anything, drop it below. Smash that like button and hit that subscribe bell so you can get all the updates. I hope you're staying safe out there. I know it's a lot of uncertainty going on when this is gonna be published. So stay safe and I'm gonna see you in the next one. Hey, hey, Colin here. Thanks for watching that video. I got a free PDF for you, The Seven Principles of Living Wild. Short and sweet, not long, not gonna be a novel you have to read or anything, just a simple reference of the things that make you a healthy human. So click on the button below, get that right now, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.